Hey, 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 everybody. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Wine Down Live. I'm your host, Shayla Bernardo. And if you're new here, welcome. Uh, I am on here every single week and the wine friends join in with me. They always bring their wine while I'm reviewing a wine for you so that you can kind of taste before you buy. I mean, you're tasting via me. But still, <laughs> so every single week I review a new wine and you get a chance to see if it sounds like something you'd enjoy. You get a first hand live tasting experience. And you know what? It's always a really good time. So if you're new here, stick around. We're going to have a new wine tonight. And if you're not new here, definitely say hello. Drop hello in the comments. What's up? Hey, Siobhan. Hey, hey, Glam, Glam Sam. I like that name. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you from Charleston. Hey, Basic Wine Babes. What's up, Nicole? So we're going to have some fun tonight. I have a wine that I've been allowing to breathe for a little while. Hey, Erin. Oh, uh, hey, the Black Girl Company. So the wine that I am having tonight is a Merlot. Now, I know you guys wanted to see me review wines. You guys wanted me to send them ahead of time. I'm going to try and send you guys at least two per month. But sometimes, y'all know how it is. You get in the mood for something. And I was really in the mood for a good Merlot. So that is what I have selected to sip on tonight, okay? What's up? Hey, Gail. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Paulette. Thank you. Hey, Alicia. We got all of our society members. Hey, Max. What's up? All of our society members and all of our ambassadors checking in. Hey, Kelly. What is going on? So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what wine I'm enjoying before we do our first giveaway. Here is what we are sipping on. Lacole Merlot. And this is Lacole 41 Merlot, by the way. So I am going to post a picture of this so you guys don't have to worry about like, oh my gosh, I didn't see the bottle. But this is what we're sipping on tonight. I was in the mood for a really, really good Merlot. And I want to tell you guys all about this Merlot as soon as Merlot is smart girl wine. I know that's right. <laughs> as soon as we finish our first giveaway. So in order to win the giveaway, you have to hit share on the video. So if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit that share button real quick. And if you are watching on Instagram, thank you, Matt. If you're watching on Instagram, um, then you can go ahead and hit the paper plane over there in the corner and shoot this off to a bunch of your friends and let them know that you're watching Black Girls Wine Live right now. Okay? So I'm going to give you guys time to share the button. I mean, share the show. Look, hit the button and go ahead and drop your wine glasses and everything like that. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks like we're talking about makeup. Hey, Terry. Look, you guys are loving the makeup look tonight. Thank you. I got a new palette that will actually be dropping in a vlog. I've recorded a vlog and just haven't finished editing it yet, y'all. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, but I have uh, picked up a new palette from, what, who is it? Morphe by Jacqueline Hill. Um, so I really was excited. It was my first Morphe palette. So I got the second one. It's the one with all the like pinks and stuff in it. So I wanted to try that one. I thought it would be something fun, something new. I threw away a bunch of all of my old palettes. You guys know you've got to throw away your old makeup just like you throw away old wine. Okay. We're not, we're not keeping make old makeup. All right. 12 months is like the max on most makeup. Um, and a lot of it you wouldn't keep as long as that long either. So make sure you're not dipping in and using all that old stuff forever okay <laughs> but this is the morphe jacqueline hill palette and i think this is the number two so i've got like four four shades on or whatever um but i just want to try something new bring you guys a little color you know a little fun for tonight so for tonight's um giveaway question i have something fun i actually have thought of i was trying to hear what my sister was playing i can't quite hear it just yet but i got an idea for who it sounded like so <laughs> i'll ask you guys a question and um you guys have to get the answer right so in order to win the giveaway you have to have shared the video and you got to be the first person to type the answer to the question that i'm going to ask now, if you guys have like really fast fingers, then kudos to you. I definitely do not. <laughs> so it's always fun. Um, you still have old eyeshadow? Max is trying to time to get rid of it. Time to get rid of it. <laughs> um, you guys always have a lot of fun dropping your answers in the comments. So this is gonna be really fun. It's always fun for me to see who can type that fast. <laughs> Three years ago, Max, get rid of that ASAP. 
Yes, maroon was one of the colors of the season. And I have been really loving maroon. This shirt in particular, um, I can't remember where I got it from. But I just, I really like the color. I thought it was pretty. It was like a nice color for, um, you know, just to warm up the warm up the skin a little bit for wintertime. I'm trying to get out of wearing so much black. I want to wear more color. I love, 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 love black, though. It's hard to, like, give that up. So, um, yes, you guys have got to start... 12 months max, you guys. And if you don't know, if, just, just before we do the giveaway, let me just tell you guys. If you don't know when your makeup expires, you can look on the back of your makeup. Um, when you don't use it often, you don't want to throw it away. That's true. You don't want to throw it away. However, however, it still does wear over time. And understand that makeup think about wine. You know how when you open up wine and oxygen gets to it and everything, um, all of the flavors in the wine are really able to open up in your glass, right? When you pour it in there, I've been letting my Merlot breathe for a while, right? Opened it up. Oxygen's got into it. It's been breathing. All kinds of stuff. Well, your makeup is the same way. You open up your makeup and even if you use it five times in 12 months, every time you open it up, oxygen and everything in the air, everything on your brush. And if you're not using that palette that often, but you're using it and that brush you're using isn't clean, you're transferring product from one thing to another, your makeup, it doesn't matter how often you wear it in a year, but it does wear. So you want to make sure you're not keeping it too long. What if you have it for a year and you haven't used it? Now, if you've had it for a year and you haven't used it at all, like it's still, the plastic still on it, you should still be good. Um, but again, the little container, there's a little container. It looks like a little, um, I can't, it's like a little container on the back and it's a circle and it has a top on it and it has a number. Usually it'll say 12M or 6M. That means 12 months or six months. And that tells you how long that product lasts. Okay. Yes. Those brushes should definitely be cleaned weekly. <laughs> You thought your favorite color was purple? You know, my favorite color, I don't think I have a true, true favorite color. I love, love, love colors. You've been living in black during the pandemic. You know, thank you, Nicole. I, I have been wearing a lot of black. However, I like a little color. So you just looked on the back and one palette read 24 months and the other 12 months. Exactly. There you go. You've never seen that. So you guys learned something new tonight. I'm happy to be your source for wine, fashion, beauty, and, you know, lifestyle entertainment. <laughs> Look, so you have got to throw that makeup out. You cannot keep it. So, definitely, yes, and Darl is right. If you can wash your brushes daily, definitely do that. If you're like me, I'm lazy. I just buy, I've purchased enough brushes that I don't have to do it daily. I just swap them out. Um, I'm due for a good cleaning, though, because most of them are dirty now. But, yeah, you've had yours for years. Erin, it's time to throw it away. <laughs> Thank you, Artisa. <laughs> so, what's up, DJ? Um, so, you guys have to. Throw it out. Pam, what's up, Pam? That's because I'm still a stylist at heart. You're right. Um, so for those of you who don't know, actually, my first business I ever started back in 2011 was a style consulting business. My degree is in fashion. I've always been obsessed with fashion and beauty and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, that was my first business. <laughs> so I'm happy to like help help you guys out. I'm here with the old eyeshadow. Yes, it is time. Listen. So you throw your makeup away and just refresh yourself. And you got to think about it, guys. Makeup and beauty color palettes and everything like that, they follow along with fashion too. So you definitely can be a little more up to date um, than with your older palettes and stuff, okay? Thank you, Pam. Pam says she's a beast. Pam is one of my old styling clients. Oh, um, I helped her get ready. She did a TED Talk. And I styled her for her TED Talk. She looked so fabulous. She was so amazing. Pam is an amazing woman. So it's Pam Minds over on Instagram. That's who I'm talking about. Who um, We were chatting back and forth. But yes, and Nancy, that's a great reminder. You guys know Bubbles and Beauty is coming up. If you don't know what Bubbles and Beauty is, it's the opportunity for you to sit down. Um, you will get a live makeup tutorial from a makeup professional. And in the last one, the ladies asked if I would do it too. Um, so this time I am going to be doing a live makeup um, tutorial as well. And we're going to be talking all things wine and beauty and style and getting ready for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to do a tutorial for um, makeup looks. So 
I want you guys to make sure <laughs> that you get registered. Tickets are available. And if you have not already bought your ticket, um, they are still available. They're available online. And we didn't even take away the early bird sale. So you can still get your ticket early. You can still get the early bird price. I've not taken it down yet. So look, <laughs> this is a little secret. I haven't taken it down. But all of our members get in free. So shout out to all the society sisters. Let's get into this first question. All right. So. For your question for tonight, get your fingers ready. This one's a fun one. So what is the name? He is a African-American male artist from the state of Virginia. And he was famous for the song Run It in the early 2000s. If you can guess his name, <laughs> then you will be the winner of this first giveaway. And just to let you guys know, while you guys are typing, um, this male artist is from Tappahannock, Virginia, actually. And he is one of my absolute favorites. So everybody is chiming in. Looks like J. Cole World and Miss Siobhan Thomas are the first winners. <laughs> they are the winners for tonight. And the answer is Chris Brown. I love Chris Brown. He's one of my faves. Um, I support Chris Brown. <laughs> oh, not him. Don't do Chris like that. Don't do him like that, okay? He has grown up. He's a whole new man. Yes, he is. He is he, Exactly. Social butterfly got it. Um, his name is Handsome. Okay, Aaron. <laughs> no, I love him too. He he. I love his music. He is our generation's MJ. You know, he's got all the moves and he can sing and all that good stuff. So he's one of my favorites. I like him. <laughs> so congrats to our winners for the first giveaway tonight. Make sure you DM the page, Black Girls Wine, and we will make sure you get your um, gift card for the BGW store. Okay. Take you down was your favorite song. Take you down was my jam, honey. It was my jam. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's get into tonight's wine. I want to let you guys know that I am going to bring on a special guest tonight, okay? I have a special guest who's going to be joining me at about 8.55 on Facebook and YouTube. So IG and Facebook, I want to let you know ahead of time, all right? Because we're going to log off of IG a little early tonight so that we can talk to our special guest. So IG fam, you got to get ready because at 8.55, we're going to dip out and go talk to our guests over on uh, Facebook and YouTube. So you guys will be able to pull up on your TV at home if you have a smart TV or you'll be able to pull it up over on Facebook on our Black Girls Wine page, okay? Special guest tonight, and I'm really excited about chatting with her. Angela, you got a do. Oh, Angela was second, look. Oh, all right, so we're getting ready to drink this Merlot. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about it, okay? So, and this is from the winemaker's notes that I'm reading, all right? This is a Washington Merlot. And if you guys remember, we actually had a Washington Merlot a few weeks ago maybe more than a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago now, and it was really good. Um, and you guys didn't tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're drinking tonight. Drop it in the comments while I read this to you guys. All right, so this serious and structured Merlot reveals intri intriguing aromatics of dark fruit, tobacco, leaf, cedar, violet, and rose. Its rich texture is elevated by flavors of black cherry, peppercorn, grounded by Ferguson's graphite minerality, carrying into a flavorful, persistent finish. So Merlot is a black grape variety that grows in moderate to warm climates. It happens to be one of my personal favorites. Um, it's typically a dry wine and it usually has like medium acidity, medium tannins. Um, in France, it's often combined with Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, but I enjoy this varietal by itself. I don't think, I just, I love it. I don't think it needs anything else. Um, so you guys are drinking some really interesting stuff tonight. We got White Zen. Washington grapes are great. They are. Um, let me see. We got Murphy's Good Point Pinot Noir of the Birch Streaminer. Kaleidoscope Red Wine Blend. Uh, seven Daughters, Light and Sweet, okay. We got a Petite Syrah, Jacob's Creek, Cabernet Merlot. Let me see, I missed some of the other ones up above. Rich soil for grapes up there, really? Well, I'm excited. Um, and we got a Brut Rosé, okay. Back, a uh, BGM Merlot, okay. Well, I'm excited. You're having a Beaujolais? I enjoy a good Beaujolais. That is another uh, favorite of mine. 
Um, Abby Creek, Pinot Noir, Louis Jadeau, Pinot Noir. Okay, Joel got y'all got y'all got some good wines tonight. A Blanco Rioja. I feel like I need details on this, B. That sounds really good. A Rioja Reserve. We, what? Okay, first of all, the society, why are all y'all drinking Spanish wines? What's going on? Was that was it Spanish wine night? Nobody told me. What's happening? <laughs> all right, so let's see what I'm getting on the nose for this one. Oh gosh, it smells really, really good. So typically when you have like really, really ripe Merlot grapes, you're going to get um, a lot of red fruit notes. So you'll get like the strawberry and stuff like that. And then when you have the um, the riper Merlot grapes, you're going to get more like cooked black fruit. Um, so you'll get your blackberries and your, and your deep plums and that kind of stuff. So here we go. Water. I'm in the process of moving. So I'm waiting to buy my wine. Oh my goodness. Well, at least you get to enjoy this through me, vicariously through me. So honestly, on my nose, when I look at this, I definitely am getting the dark fruit. I smell the plum. I kind of smell the tobacco leaf. Another thing that, that you can get with Merlot is green pepper. And I feel like I am getting a little green pepper with this one. You're having a cab from Washington Street. So Washington State, a Blanco Rioja. I need more info. That's what I said. I need more info on this Blanco Rioja. Who was drinking that? Baina. Baina, we need details on the Blanco Rioja. Okay. I'm ready to taste it, y'all. Mmm. Okay. It said something a little bit about peppercorn. I'm getting that peppercorn for sure. Mm. Okay, Nunu, the makeup artist who's going to be joining me for uh, Bubbles and Beauty, she's having a mimosa because she had breakfast for dinner. And I have to say I'm a little jealous. I enjoy breakfast for dinner. I love a good um, pancake, really good pancake. And thank you. This glass is by Raylo. A black woman made this. You can go to shopraylo.com to enjoy it. Mm. So this is a really, really pretty wine in the glass, too. I will agree. It is kind of a good uh, garnet. Garnet is what I would call it. Let me see. Black cherry. I'm getting a little bit of the black cherry. I am getting a little bit of the black cherry, guys. It's that peppercorn for me, though. That's that's what I'm getting. Like, it is a peppery Merlot, but I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Mm. Now, around here, I like to rate my wines, and I rate them based on the culture, okay? So when it comes to wines, I think that this one, honestly, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to rate it Maya from Girlfriends. And this is why I'm rating it Maya from Girlfriends. Because to me, she was like a real, she was a moody character, but I really liked her. Like sometimes she would be a lot of fun and she would be like, oh my gosh, like so loving on Joan. And then other times she would just be like real snappy. And I feel like this is definitely a moody kind of wine. I let this one like really sit and it is opening up. And I know that if I let this sit a little bit longer, it would open up even more. And I feel like it would have that kind of, um, it would have that extra, that extra spiciness from the oxen just kind of waking up that peppercorn if the wine had a little bit longer to breathe. So I'm rating this Maya from Girlfriend. She was real. Maya was real. To me, this is, I, I really, really, I like this. Um, I switch up my ratings. Sometimes I rate them based on shows. Sometimes I rate them based on girls night, um, that kind of thing. But I feel like this one, I really want to rate by character. It's giving me Maya. So <laughs> if Maya was your favorite, I think that you might like this. Um, this is not a transition wine. So for all of my newer wine drinkers, um, typically here, what we consider a transition wine is a wine that is perfect. It's a perfect next step for you if you're still in that sweet wine loving category. And that's okay. Um, but this wine is definitely not for you. This is a dry red, um, and it's, it's delicious, though, y'all. Absolutely delicious. Hey, how are you, Miss Trill Wine Wife? Y'all make sure you go follow Miss Trill Wine Wife, okay? 
with her oh hell no yes i know maya's oh hell no was like that that made her the a really fun character for me i really enjoyed her oh hell no <laughs> it was so good it was so good um so yeah not maya no you weren't a fan of maya some more lows come out flat for me, so I might enjoy the peppercorn. I think you might like this, Siobhan. So I feel like if you think a Merlot comes out flat, then you're probably talking about the Merlots that are typically from like more moderate climates, less uh, less warm because they're cooler. And typically the, the notes from those tend to be more like red fruit. So they're strawberries, um, you know, ripe, ripe berries, but not. Can you share what the wine is again? Yes. So that could be why, and maybe, do you like typically like spicy reds? Because that could be why too. If you like spicy reds, uh, a moderate to, moderate climate Merlot is not going to give you that that hit like that. I am sipping on Le Col 41 Merlot. It's really good. This wine is giving me a little bit of, a little bit of complexity. I like it. When, I, when she turned that Oh Hell No into an Oh Hell Yes book, yes, definitely. So I definitely, she was always popping off. Is it peppery like Syrah? No, it's not peppery like Syrah. Mm -mm. Hmm. To me, there's a little bit of a roundness to this. I like it. I'm trying to think of the other, I'm getting plum. I feel like I am, I can taste that dark cherry. The more I drink it, the more I'm getting the dark cherryness. Um, Merlot me, yes. I listen, I live for good Merlot. Um, I'm getting a little green pepper. I am getting the peppercorn. I feel like there's a hint of like a cinnamon, just a hint, just a hint. Um, but I like it. That wine is so good with a cigar. See, I'm not a smoker, but apparently for our cigar lovers, we have here that this one is really good with a cigar. So something to consider. Let's see. Uh we have a good question on the floor. When you're trying a new wine, do you read the tasting notes first or do you test your nose? So <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, when it comes to wines, it depends. Sometimes I will, sometimes I will read it first. If I'm reading it, trying to test my nose, like in partic like particularly like, okay, let me see what I'm getting. You know, I will smell it first and then see what I'm getting and then see if I'm right. I also sometimes like to see, I like to read ahead sometimes because I want to see if I'm going to be able to pick up what they're saying. So like the tobacco leaf, I could see what they're saying, but if I hadn't read that, I would not have picked that up. Not, I wouldn't have thought it tobacco leaf. It would have... It would have given me a smoky kind of tobacco smell, but I would not have been so specific as to say tobacco leaf. You know what I mean? So sometimes I like to read ahead just to kind of see what I should be expecting. And then I can kind of talk to you guys about what I'm actually getting on my palate, you know? So that's kind of kind of how I drink. It depends. It really just depends on my mood. <laughs> so I love a wine with like a good, a great aroma. And this one is aromatic. It's, it smells like some wines, you know, how you just smell them and you're like, my goodness, that smells good. This is one of those wines. It is good. Oh, hell yes. This is one of those wines. <laughs> All right. So we are shortly getting ready to wrap up here on IG and head on over to Facebook for our special guest. I just want to let you guys know something. Uh, membership to the Black Owned Wine Society is closing soon, okay? So you have a few more days left in this month, and then it's going to be closed until the spring. I don't want you to miss your chance. We've got some really great opportunities coming up. We're partnering with Black Girls Golf. We're partnering with um, a whole lot of new partners, a whole lot of opportunities, um, events, all kinds of stuff coming um, virtual that you'll be able to attend from anywhere. Um, and we also have some in-person events later on this year. Once we've all had a chance to, you know, <clears throat> get ourselves together from COVID. <laughs> but we've got some other major things coming on. And I really don't want you guys to miss the opportunity 
to join in, okay? So if you are interested in learning to taste wines, become a better taster, become a better drinker, and be a part of a sisterhood, then you definitely want to make sure you join, okay? My mom just looked at my phone and said she likes your tattoo. Oh, thank you. I was just telling my sister, I feel like I need to get it touched up a little bit, just a little. Um, South Florida, yes, we have Collin County, South Florida, virtual West Coast ambassador. We have two virtual chapters. So if we're not in a city near you, you can still join us and you get all of the perks and benefits. You get to go to all our events and stuff free and you still get to participate. You won't feel left out. Trust me, nobody knows how to have a virtual party like the Black Rose Wine Society. Trust me. Um, Chicago, Belleville, yes, Central Texas, openings in Philly, uh, Tampa Bay chapter, woohoo! Miami, we got, let me see, where else we at? Where my girls at? Hey, hey, thank you. You get full glasses. Oh yeah, we gotta work on that. You gotta, you know, pour just, just so... <laughs> I share it with my fellow BGW ambassadors, my other love fragrances, and there's so many similarities. Oh, I bet. I bet. BlackGirlsWineSociety.com. Yes. Heather Scott said our virtual parties are lit. We got Fredericksburg, Tampa. So we are in 50 cities across 51. We have 51 chapters across the country. I don't want to misstate that. <laughs> we have 51 chapters <laughs> across the country. So Jacksonville. Um, I look at our, we have them up. They're on our page, but you can also visit the website for the current chapters. Okay. Y'all, y'all like put me on the spot. So <laughs> I don't always remember every single one off the top of my head because we've grown so much, which we're super grateful for and super excited. Yes, our LA chapter. Um, so many of our society sisters log on and tune in. So definitely Look, check us out, blackgirlswinesociety.com. We would love to have you. It's a growing sisterhood, and we have a really great time. Um, so our new member welcome is coming up next month, and we can't wait to party with all of our new sisters. So we want you to be a part of that. Yes, we have Miami and Tampa. What's the best transition wine for beer drinkers? That's a really good question. So, uh... Our Atlanta ambassador, Fairfax, New York. Ow. Um, okay, so this is a really good question. I'm gonna tell you something. I don't drink beer, so I am probably not the best person to ask. There may be some people out there who drink wine and also drink beer that could answer that question for you. I have never had a beer that I liked. So I I don't know. I I don't know, I don't have an answer for that. Um, maybe start with a mead. So Alicia said maybe start with a mead. Yeah, I definitely don't have an answer for this one, honey. I'm sorry. I I can't stand beer. <laughs> um, white wines, try something dry. That's true. You might want to try drier wines if you like beer, because to me, beer is just bitter. <laughs> My mom is ear hustling, talking about where the meeting going to be. <laughs> Tell her she has to join, and she will have all the tea. She can log into her account and see. <laughs> Start with the white. Okay, so we've got some answers for you in Riesling, something white. So all of our other wine lovers who also like beer, they're saying start with meads and start with whites. So there you go. We got some answers. See, we're a family here. When you ask great questions, we always have answers. <laughs> all right, Instagram, we are going to head on over to Facebook so I can bring on my special guest. Thanks, Mom. BGW Mom is on. Um, maybe even a bubbly. Actually, that's a good call. If you drink beer, uh, champagne or something bubbly may be a good call for you, too. From beer, Asia says sparkling. So there you go. Try your sparkling wines. All right, Instagram, thanks so much for logging on and watching with me this week. I love, love, love you guys. This was fun. Talking beauty, talking wine, talking everything. Um, you guys, make sure if you have any beauty or fashion or wine questions to let me know. DM me. I like to come on and answer questions for you guys. So I will see you guys next week. I will be over on Facebook. All right. Bye. All right, Facebook. All right. Where's the Facebook fam at? What's up, Facebook? IG? Um, so, I mean, not IG, Facebook and YouTube. So now it's just us guys. Um, so I'm excited. We Our special guest tonight is someone that I actually met 
here online through Black Girls Wine. And she is our, an ambassador. She has a great, great story to tell. And I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Come on in the room, Miss Alicia. Um, you might have to turn her sound on. It looks like it's muted. You see the mic? There we go. Yeah. Is it acting shady? It's not letting you unmute her? She has to unmute herself. Oh, I think you have to unmute yourself, Alicia. Can you unmute? Yep, I'm good. I can't hear her. Though. Can you hear me? Hmm. Hold on, guys. We're getting it together here. That's muted. Turn it up, maybe. Still muted. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, unplug the microphone here. Let's see if that helps. Unplug it from the thing. And then see if the sound, the audio. Guys, we're getting the sound together so that you can hear Alicia. You can hear her, but I can't hear her. Y'all can hear her, though. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay, well, maybe leave the mic plugged in and let's see what the audio is doing. I don't know. Look. Okay, guys. Well, I want to, I want Alicia. Default. What is that? LG. Oh, switch the speaker. Go to the computer. Alicia? Yes. There we go. Now I can hear her. <laughs> Okay, awesome. I'm like, look, we had to test it out. Shout out to my sister, who is also my sound engineer back there. I just love her. <laughs> we could not do this without her. Okay, so I am excited to have you on, Alicia. You have such an amazing story to tell from being here at BGW. And I just want you to share that with everyone who is watching with us. How did you hear about BGW? And what... Um, you know, what got you excited about finding BGW? Tell us your BGW journey. Well, it's funny because I was looking for just ways to connect with black women and wine and things like that. And I remember searching and I came up on an event you were doing in DC. Uh -huh. And then, you know, as soon as I found the event, it's like, oh, the event is sold out. And I was like, really? I was like, okay. So then I had messaged and I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, I know, you know, the event's coming up. It says it's sold out. If you have any other tickets, you know, let me know. And so then I got a message back. It's like, oh, you know, it's all sold out. We don't have any more tickets, but I have a show every week called Wind Down Live and you should check us out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I ended up, you know, checking out the show and I really enjoyed it. And then I got in on the subscription boxes when you started doing the subscription box and it ended up being the last subscription box. And I was like, oh no. And so, you know, I got on and, you know, I got the subscription box. We were ready to do, um, you know, the wind down live thing every week. And uh -huh. so then as we were talking and chatting with all the uh, the ladies on wind down live, it's like, oh, we should all get together. We should all plan an event and kind of get together somewhere and just meet up so we can just get to know each other in person. Yes. So I that's kind of where we planned that, that, that um, weekend that we did in Richmond. Yes. And that was 2019? Uh, yes. Yeah, so around there, yeah. 2018. 2018. <laughs> So yeah. this has been, she, was a, she had the subscription box in 2018, and then we got to meet in person in 2019 at the, um, we had a weekend, we did a wine weekend all together for everybody who watches Wine Down Live here in Richmond. Um, and so what happened after that? And then after that, um, you know, I met Angela, and Angela was the one that kind of came up with the idea about, oh, we need to do this more often, we need to get together and meet and do that kind of thing. So then the society was born. So as soon as, you know, Shayla started talking about, oh, we're going to do the society, I said, oh, I've got to get involved in that. I've got to be, you know, one of these ambassadors because I really want to be involved. And so uh, fast forward, you know, we started with 10 chapters. I was uh, one of the original um, ambassadors for Black Girls Wine Society here in Baltimore. And um, it's just been amazing. Um, I enjoy the sisterhood. I enjoy um, we grew, uh, you know, slowly at first because we kind of had to get the word out and get people to know us. But um, mm -hmm. the sisters, as we learned and got to know each other and grew, I mean, we all became very close. Um, we got to know people across the country. Um, I know people, I can say pretty much everywhere I go now, I have a sister somewhere. I know people in Richmond, yeah. Chicago, you know, Texas. And, you know, I feel like anywhere I go, I could say, hey, let's go grab a glass of wine because I know all these people everywhere now. So it's very, yeah. um, 
it's just amazing. Yes, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. So glad to have you. So how did you first get into wine? Um, it started, I was doing a work function. Uh -huh. um, and so we did this kind of conference and I went and they had like a pre-dinner reception or something like that. And so, of course, you know, they were ringing around wines and I was like, oh, I don't really drink wines. I don't know anything about wines. I was like, what do you have that's sweet? And so they had ice wine. So ice wine was like the first wine that I ever experienced. And I was like, oh, wow. it, yes. And I was just like, oh, I love it. This is great. So I'm coming home and I'm like, I told my husband, I was like, oh, I've got to find some ice wine. That was, you know, I had it at this, you know, this conference. It was really good. And so that's kind of where I started with ice wines. And okay. so then okay. my husband went on a work trip and he mm -hmm. went out to California and he and some of his coworkers went and did um, a winery tour at Visa Tui. And so they brought home some wine and he brought home some Angelica, which I don't know if you all know, but it's, it's a dessert wine that's fortified. And so mm -hmm. that was also sweet. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is fortified this is wine. Like, right. So I was like, oh, I love wine. This is good. And so then kind of that started my wine journey. And so I can tell you for years, I would say probably a good, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 years even, I was stuck on the sweet wines. I was mm -hmm. drinking you know, ice wines and, and, you know, Moscatos and just anything I could find that was sweet because that's what I was used to. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was with, you know, some of my cousins and they like some of the drier wines. And so they said, you, you've got to get into, you know, break out, you know, try something new. And so, you know, as they kind of pushed me forward, pushed me forward, we just developed a family wine group. And so we mm -hmm. kind of got together once a month and we would kind of plan um, each person would plan their own little event. So we would plan maybe events wow. with, um, you know, someone would do like a port wine night and someone would do like a, we're going to do South African wines. We're going to do Spanish wines. We're going to do, you know, and so each person would have to bring a bottle of wine and they would have to talk about their wine. So we would, you know, we were learning as we were kind of sipping. And so even if it's something that I was like, okay, I don't like it. I had to taste like seven, eight wines. And it was like, okay, something I found that I liked. And right. so eventually, you know, as the years have gone by, my palate has developed and now I'll drink pretty much anything at this point. Same, same, same. So what, what is it that you enjoy the most about being able to combine sisterhood and wine? I think it's just kind of knowing that I always have someone that's there with me, mm -hmm. um, someone that's helping me grow, someone that's helping me challenge myself. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still learning, you know, wine is not something that you just know. It's something that you constantly have to keep learning about. Um, yep. I'm starting my WSET journey. Um, I was able to get a scholarship through Wine Access with Josh Hart. So I'm doing my WSET now. And um, I'm hoping to kind of grow and, and learn through that process because it, it's all about education and then just learning from me. And then I just enjoy sisterhood and, and helping other people grow and, help, and just developing that rapport so that we're all together mm -hmm. and we... You know, it's just been amazing. Just the, the experience of not only getting the education, but also getting that sister bond of having people that will always kind of go and hang out with and, you know, the good times, the bad times. And then, of course, there's always wine. <laughs> yes, there is always wine. So if you had to tell someone you're convincing them in 30 seconds or less, you're like, OK, let me tell you about Black Girls Wine Society. Because I feel like I always talk about it, right, on the show. And I talk about all of you all. But I want to hear from you, 30 seconds or less. What would you tell somebody if they're like, why should I join the society? I would say it's it's not something, I, I think the experience, it, it's different for everyone. But for me, it's more about the bonds that I've built, the sisterhood, and just the ability to kind of be able to always have someone supporting me and 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 enjoying what I enjoy, and just mm -hmm. kind of being able to connect on that level um, with the wine and and everything else kind of just falls into place around the wine. Yeah. Um, so I think if, if it's something, if you enjoy sisterhood, if you enjoy wine, I would say it's just a place where you can just come and feel safe and be at home. What's something you're looking forward to this year with the society, with your society sisters? Um, I would say getting out. Um, there were some trips that we were kind of, we wanted to do some trips this year. We wanted to do some wine uh -huh. trails. 
Um, uh-huh. COVID kind of messed up that last year. So maybe this year um, <laughs> as, as we kind of get through, you know, the worst part of COVID, hopefully um, we'll be able to do some more exploring, maybe some, you know, day trips, some weekend trips, some things like that. I think um, that's kind of what we've been looking forward to. Yes. You know, Alicia got me a wine pass this year for Christmas, which I'm super excited because I've never had one. So I'm really excited. Thank you, Alicia, that I get to explore and use my wine pass. Um, So yeah, I'm really excited about getting out and mingling. And look, all of our sisters are over in the comments. Like, this is a beautiful sisterhood. Like, it so is. And Cynthia said it starts and ends with sweet wines. I think you're right, Cynthia, because I definitely have gotten to the point where I can drink sweet wines again. Um, Not super sweet. I stay away from like super, super sweet. They're like syrup for me, but, um, but I can drink sweet wines again too. So what is your favorite wine you've had recently that you've had in the last, I'm going to say 30 days. Cause we drink a lot of wine. So it's hard to remember far back. <laughs> I would say, well, I had, I did WSAC class on Sunday. Um, so I guess one of my favorite wines was a Beaujolais that I had. Um, and that was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, and then of course, you know, I love port wine. So I had a, um, <laughs> I had a delicious, um, actually Chardonnay um, mm-hmm. that was made that was aged in whiskey barrels from Celebration Cellars, which is here in Maryland, and okay. that was pretty tasty. So okay. those are kind of the ones that I've had recently that I really enjoyed. So have you tried uh, Sip and Share wines, Port wine? Did you order that when we had the tasting with her? I did. Hmm. Um. Did you open it yet? No. It's good. You're going to like it. It's good. I just opened it. I don't remember when I opened it. I opened it to review it, and then I haven't even posted about it yet, but it's pretty good. Um, yes, for a balanced sweet wine, Cynthia. Look. Um, <laughs> Siobhan, yes, we can definitely explore together. Alicia is the queen of port. Alicia is the queen of port. So we need to have <laughs> Alicia do a port tasting for us. I feel like we need to challenge her for that because <laughs> she can put us all onto some really great ports. Well, Alicia, I, did a port, I did a port wine tasting for uh, the Chicago chapter a couple months ago. Oh, look at you. Okay, so we got to get her national, right, y'all? Somebody said, what's a wine pass? I'm going to let Alicia tell you. Look, she's my guest. So, okay. Well, I don't know if they have them in every state, but I know like Maryland has one. Virginia has one. Basically, mm-hmm. it's just kind of like a, a, a cute, uh, not a coupon, but it's, it's, they have wineries that participate in the program. Mm-hmm. And so they'll give you like different discounts depending on where, which winery you go to. Sometimes it's like a percentage off the wine you buy. Sometimes you get a free tasting. Sometimes you get both a free tasting and, you know, percentage off your wine or money off your wine or things like that. So it depends on where you are and what you do. But um, I know in Maryland and Virginia, they have it. I'm not sure what other states they have it in. Mm-hmm. So it gives you like a list of wines that you can kind of work your way through and save and that kind of stuff. So that's what it is, Lisa. All right. So Indianapolis needs a wine pass, child. Look, I'm just glad we have it. Now, the question is if we're going to all be able to get out of the house and be able to actually use it. But we I hope see. so. I hope so, too. Well, Alicia, thank you for joining me. I'm so happy that I could have you on and you were able to share your BGW story. Do you have any last remarks before we log off? Join the society. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Listen, if you are interested in joining Black Rose Wine Society for a little bit, limited time, look, we only we got less than a week left in this month. So the society doors are closing and won't be open until the spring. So if you want to join in on the fun and the learning and expanding your palette with us, you can visit us at BlackRoseWineSociety.com. Thank you, Alicia. And if, and if you want to be an ambassador. Oh. That's true. You need to uh, join the society and be in the society for 60 to 90 days. Um, and then we can help you start a chapter near you. Yes. And you know what? Before we leave, I did, we did not talk about Alicia's current role. That's why I should look. <laughs> Alicia's current role here with the society is she is our ambassador team lead. They call her Madam VP. <laughs> They call her Madam VP of Operations. I'm like, what, guys? But tell them a little bit about what you do and how you help our ambassadors show up and be absolutely amazing. Um, so basically, I assist the uh, the 
society uh, lead with uh, doing interviews and things for the new ambassadors. Then we help them through an orientation process and then kind of help them get started um, on their journey um, with starting the new chapters and, and kind of keeping up with um, them and the angel leads that we have that are over top of the ambassadors just to kind of make sure that you all um, as a society members are getting everything that you need and everything that helps make your journey even better. Yay! So if you're interested in being an ambassador, definitely go ahead and join us. Like Alicia said, you got to be in the for 60 to 90 days. And we definitely are looking for new ambassadors all across the country. Siobhan said, Alicia keeps us in line. Um, <laughs> Alicia will be the first person, um, one of the first people that you talk to here at Black Girls Wine Society. Um, and she does a really great job of getting the ladies ready to lead some really dynamic chapters. So Thank you so much, Alicia. Look, see, that's Absolutely. why I got to be on it. <laughs> um, but you are amazing. I'm so glad to call you sister and call you friend and to be working with you um, and to have you by my side. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody, we are off. I hope that you all have an amazing night. This was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun tonight. So glad you guys got to hear from Alicia too. Um, if you guys ever have any questions or you want to ask us anything, definitely shoot a DM over to the Black Girls Wine page. If you're in the Black Girls Wine family group, that's our open group for everyone. There's over 10,000 women in that group. You can join us there. Um, so you can join us in Black Girls Wine family. And I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to have half as much fun as we have over in the society. So I will see you guys next week when our doors are actually closed. So get in while you can. I love all of you all. Have a great night.